Hey everyone, this is a quick walkthrough of the Bezel workspace called Bezel Mystery. This is kind of a gamified Bezel workspace that will help you to learn and understand some of the Bezel fundamentals. So there's a mystery of missing Bezel. This is the herb Bezel. And we need to solve this mystery by running different Bezel commands and queries and all of that good stuff. So the only prerequisite is that we have Bezelisk installed and this will dynamically download and use the required version of Bezel. So now for the mystery, John is a Bezel farmer. Some of his Bezel mysteriously went missing um, and a crime scene report was written up. So the only rules here are that we should try not to look in the build files at all and we should try to solve the case um, using Bezel queries and this readme file. So first of all, there's a crime scene report. This is a Bezel build target, and we can see the crime scene report by building this target. So I'm just gonna copy this. And next we get kind of a view of all of the packages in this Bezel workspace. It's kind of strange to have this entity relationship diagram for Bezel packages, but it helps you to understand um, the layout of the workspace. So first of all, we have um, build targets. We know already about crime scene reports. We also have people and cars. And as you would have in an ordinary software project using Bazel or any other build tool, you have different kinds of targets. So these are build targets. These are kind of like libraries. And then we have this run target, which actually is, I guess, like an executable. So you can actually run this target. And this executable can depend on other libraries and things. So that's what these people and cars are. So the interview run target depends on people and people can depend on cars. And then we just have this test target or this test package, this package, which includes test targets called solution. So now just some hints um, so we can look at dependencies, so we can look at dependencies of people like John. And we can see that John depends on another target called, uh, which is a car. We can see that that aligns with this, that we have people can depend on cars. So we can also look at reverse dependencies. So we can look at the reverse dependencies of a person called Amy, and we can see it gives us back an interview. So this aligns with this as well. So an interview depends on a person. And we can also see here that targets can have tags. Uh, so this could also be useful in software where you want to tag different targets with different things. Um, you might have a set of tests that you only want to run in CI and different things like this. But in this case, we can see that targets in the cars package can have a color. So here we can look for all of the targets in the car package that are tagged with blue. And then just for checking our answer, we can run this test target um, and we can pass in a variable called guess and we can guess if it's John. We can see that the test fails, so we know that John isn't the answer. There's also a full solution walkthrough here, which might be useful. So let's get started and we might revisit this um, anytime we want to. So first of all, we already copied this command to see the crime scene report of the missing basil. So we're just gonna run that and we can see it gives us this output that the basil was discovered missing on the 28th of June. Two witnesses came forward with information. Their names are Amy and Mark. So that's all okay. So the things we need to remember here is Amy and Mark. So these people were interviewed, so we're gonna to want to look for interviews of these people. So that's good. Um, let's just say, imagine we forget uh, the contents of this crime scene report. If we build it again, we don't actually get any output. And this is one of the first things here we're going to learn about Bazel is that it's very good at caching build artifacts. So whenever we run this a second time, Bazel knows it's already built, so it knows it doesn't need to build it again. So we won't actually see that output again, unless uh, we invalidate the cache. We can do that by running Bezel clean. This will invalidate the cache. So now whenever we run 
uh, whenever we run this build command again, we actually do get the output the first time. So that's one thing. We can also see, since we started running these Bazel commands in the workspace, these directories were generated. These are actually symlinks to directories. So we can see here in Bazel bin, we actually get the same text output here. So we're storing the output of the build processes. So this gives us the same information, Amy and Mark. So let's use this information now to get us a bit closer to solving the case. So let's do a Bazel query for people. This is gonna tell us all of the people. We can see here, Amy and Mark are here. Uh, note that we can also run this query without the leading forward slashes. This is just explicitly telling Bazel that we're looking inside the current workspace, but we don't actually need that. So that's fine, we can query for people. Again, Amy and Mark. So we want to find out the interviews. We want to see the interviews of both Amy and Mark. And we know from this diagram that interviews depend on people. So that means the people have a reverse dependency on interviews. So we can query for the interviews by running a Bazel um, query RDEPS. And we want to query for the um, RDEPS of people Amy, like this. So we can do that. And we can see we get this interview back. We can also be kind of clever about this. So we want to actually get the interviews of both Mark and Amy. So we could do this all in a single command by looking at the reverse dependencies of Mark, Union, Amy. So you could imagine this in a software project as well, where you want to figure out all of the targets that depend on a dependency. So this is telling us that. So back to the case, we have these two interviews and we know from our diagram that interviews are Bazel run targets. So these are executable, we can run these targets. So this is most likely gonna give us the information that we want. So we can do a Bazel run and we can run the first one and we can see um, that this interview E saw somebody getting into a red car with some basil and they drove away without paying for it. So the detail here we get is that there's a red car involved. So now let's run the second one, second interview. And this is that they saw a tall person running quickly to their car with some basil. So now we know that there's a red car and it's a tall person. Also note that we can rerun these um, targets and we do actually get the output again and this is the difference between the build process and the run process in that the build process is cached so Bazel knows it doesn't need to rebuild those targets but in this case we're actually running an executable so the output is coming from the run of that so this is this could be translated to your actual software project where you have libraries that need to be built you don't run those libraries, but they need to be built. And you have software that's executable, executable and you can actually execute that and get some output. So um, that's the difference there. So back to the um, mystery, we know that there's a red car and we know that there's a tall person. So the next thing we could look at is we could query for all cars that are red. And we know that there is a cars package. So this cars package is gonna include car targets. And those car targets uh, can be tagged with different things like blue and fast. So let's query for all of the red, um, all of the targets that are tagged with red inside the cars package. So let's run this. And we can see here that we actually get two different cars. So as you can imagine, we just need to figure out which owner of these cars is tall. So one of these cars, maybe them both are owned by tall people. So that's what we need to figure out. So for the first one, 
we're going to query the reverse dependencies of that car. So we can see that um, this person ba Basil, Basil has a dependency on this car. So Basil owns this car. Let's try to do the same thing with the second car and see who owns that. So the second car is owned by Katie. So the only two red cars are owned by Basil and Katie. So now we just need to figure out which out of Basil and Katie are tall. So we can we could do that individually. We could um, we could query for that, but we can kind of use this smart query, which we're going to query for the attribute tall inside this set. So this is a set of targets and the set includes Basil and Katie. So we're just gonna see who out of Basil and Katie are tall. And we can see that the only target returned here is Basil because he's the only tall person out of Basil and Katie. So with this, we're ready to test our guess so we can test solution and we're going to pass in the variable guess um, as Basil. Let's see. We can see that the test actually passes. So we know that our guess is correct, that Basil um, took the basil. Just to show you what it looks like when you're wrong, you can guess for Katie. And this is going to fail the test um, because uh, Katie didn't take the basil. So this is kind of just a walkthrough um, in a gamified way of some of the different things you can do with Bazel, um, how you'd look for dependencies, reverse dependencies, and how all of these things are tagged. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to clone this project and play around with it, you can you can walk through that that same um, solution. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.